In this video, we will cover basic diagnostics of the electrical system for a lift chair. Here we have our lift chair, and I will focus on the bottom. As you can see, there are two different motors. Uh, one controls the back and one controls the base. We also have the power headrest and power lumbar that are up here. And then we have our hand wand that is connected inside of the pouch here. And then of course we have our power adapter. So I'll start with the power adapter. In this case, there's uh, a green light. It's a solid green light. So we know that uh, we have proper power to the chair. And then the other feature that we have in these chairs is a control box. And the control box here, I've loosened the screws so that I can pull it out and, and show that to you that it has labeling on it that indicates where all of the power and control supplies go in the chair. So in this case, try to close in here a little bit. Um, you can see that the power is over here on the right hand side. On the left hand side, we have the hand control or the hand wand. And then on this back label, starting over here in green, it says base. That's for the base motor. Blue is the back motor. Then we of course have the lumbar. And then in yellow here, it's headrest. And there is a cable that comes off and I'll go through the connectors and uh, how to trace the wires. First one we'll start with is the power. The power is this cord, which comes right through here and is in this black connector. Um, when doing the diagnostics of uh, a, well, really any of the uh, electrical furniture, um, a key thing to do while trying to diagnose um, where the failure is at is to push a feature button on the wand and then wiggle the corresponding wires that go with the particular feature. So for instance, if I were checking the headrest, I would hold the button with one hand while trying to operate it, and then I would follow the headrest, the yellow here, which is this cable, and trace my wires, move it to see if I can get intermittent working of the component. And the headrest wire here routes along the back it goes through the upholstery and then comes out here on the top side. My connectors are secure. I wanna make sure that they're pressed all the way together, that the clip is able to engage in the proper location. Um, you also wanna make sure that the, the hinge side of the clamp is properly attached. It's on the, the posts that it's supposed to pivot on. I've got a good secure connection there clamp goes in place. I would do the same thing with the lumbar, which is the second wire coming out of the control box, and it follows traces right next to the headrest in this case, which should be the situation in most pieces of furniture. Again, I have a good secure connection. I would make sure that I wiggle that while I'm trying to uh, operate the function. The next feature on the control box is the back motor, which is this wire. I'm gonna trace that one across here. It's coming through here. And as indicated on the box here, it is the blue colored, so it comes over here to the blue connectors. Next one is the base motor. That wire comes out, checking to see if there's anything wrong with the insulation. It comes over to this connector. Everything is connected properly. And then the final wire here is for the hand control. And that simply routes right here, goes through the upholstery into the pouch, and there's the connection in there with the hand wand. So I would check that as well. 
<clears throat> After checking those features, um, which by the way, I want to comment that the, the control box, this is a specific model of control box for this uh, particular lift chair. Um, the model numbers, it's important that you have the correct model number of control box for the piece of furniture. And then also very important that you have the correct model of the hand wand. And these numbers that are listed on the back of the hand wand are very important. Um, there are several hand wands that may look the same, uh, but they are different model numbers and the control box and the hand wand are not compatible. So if you use the incorrect hand wand or the incorrect control box, uh, you will cause a failure with one or both components. So uh, make sure that if you're replacing a hand wand or a control box, that you have the correct one for the model of lift chair, um, because it, it will uh, be a bit frustrating uh, trying to diagnose the problem and um, you can't just take another hand wand from another chair if it's not the same model. Uh, the other diagnostics when trying to troubleshoot an electrical uh, failure is, as I had mentioned, make sure you are wiggling in the area of connectors while pushing the hand wand to see if you can get it to function. You want to wiggle the wires that are uh, going into the motors. And up here on the lumbar, we or the lumbar and the headrest, we have the access panel. Uh, this motor wire, you're not going to be able to see it very good in the video, but it, it goes into the motor right in this location. I would try to wiggle that. And then the other motor, its wire inserts into the motor where my tip of my finger is at, right in this area. Uh, I would check that to make sure everything's okay. And, and just in general, check the condition of the wire insulation, any of the points where they're secured to make sure that there's not a hard bend uh, where it might have caused the wire strands inside of the insulation to sever and not be getting a proper connection. So looking over all of the wiring, wiggling connections, uh, secure points. If you do that, uh, you can typically isolate to what the uh, component is that needs to be replaced or the wiring. On uh, the control box and the hand wand, uh, again, extremely important that you have the correct model for the, uh, the, the chair so that um, the control box and the hand wand communicate correctly and they don't cause damage to one or both components. And that's a brief diagnostics on lift chairs.